It is my honor to give a voice to Reverend Bill Fisher's devotion that he wrote in 2014. It was entitled, A Room for Jesus. The scripture lesson is taken from Luke chapter 22, verses 7 through 13. The, the day of unleavened bread arrived when the Passover had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John with this task. Go and prepare for us to eat the Passover meal. They said to him, Where do you want us to prepare it? Jesus replied, When you go into the city, a man carrying a water jar will meet you. Follow him to the house he enters. Say to the owner of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room? where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples. He will show you a large upstairs room already furnished. Make preparations there. They went and found everything just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. The word of God for the people of God. A room for Jesus. Jesus had a lot on his mind. He was pulling together the arrangements for a room to share his last Passover meal with his closest friends. But he didn't mumble or grumble or throw a hissy fit over the inconvenience of having so many irons in the fire. Not the least of which was his own looming date with death. Nor do we see him pulling his hair out or stomping around in a hissy fit or angry agitation. To the contrary, we see a thoughtful planner who involved the help of others. Peter and John were sent to meet the man previously enlisted to open his guest room for the Passover meal. The Bible says they left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover meal, verse 13. Folks, it's okay to let people help us. Let us pray. Lord, be my help today. Give me trust to lean on those who love me. Send me on my way to help you out, Lord, with anything I could do for you and others today. Amen. Reverend Bill Fisher. It happened one day near December's end. Some neighbors called on an old-time friend, and they found his shop so meager and mean, made gay with a thousand boughs of green. And old Conrad was sitting with face a shine, when suddenly he stopped as he stitched a twine, and he said, My friends, at dawn today, when the cock was crowing the night away, The Lord appeared in a dream to me, and he said, I'm coming, your guest to be. So I've been busy with feet of stir, strowing my shop with branches of fir. The table is spread and the kettle is shined, and over the rafters the holly is twined. Now I'll sit and wait for the Lord to appear, and I'll listen closely so I will hear his steps as he nears my humble place and I'll open the door and I'll look on his face. Then his friends went home and left Conrad alone for this was the happiest day he had known for long since his family had passed away and Conrad spent many a sad Christmas day. But he knew with the Lord as his Christmas guest this Christmas would be the dearest and best. So he listened with only joy in his heart and with every sound he would rise with a start and he looked for the Lord to be at his door like the vision he had had a few hours before. So he went to the window after hearing a sound but all he could see on the snow-covered ground was a shabby old beggar whose shoes were torn and all his clothes were ragged and worn. 
And old Conrad was touched, and he went to the door, and he said, Well, your feet must be cold and sore. I have some shoes in my shop for you, and I have a coat to keep you warmer, too. So with grateful heart, the man went away. But Conrad noticed the time of day, and he wondered what made the Lord so late and how much longer he'd have to wait. Then he heard a knock, and he ran to the door. But it was only a stranger once more, a bent old lady with a shawl of black, and a bundle of kindling was piled on her back. But she asked only for a place to rest, the very place reserved for Conrad's great guest. And her voice seemed to plead, Don't send me away. Let me rest for a while. It's Christmas Day. So Conrad brewed her a steaming cup and told her to sit at the table and sup. Then after she left, he was filled with dismay, for he saw that the hours were slipping away, and the Lord had not come as he said he would, and Conrad felt sure he had misunderstood. Then out in the stillness, he heard a cry. Please help me and tell me, where am I? So again he opened his friendly door, and he stood disappointed as twice before. It was only a child who had wandered away and was lost from her family on Christmas Day. And again Conrad's heart was heavy and sad. But he knew he could make this little girl glad. So he called her in, and he wiped her tears. Then he quieted all her childish fears, and he led her back to her home once more. Then as he entered his own darkened door, he knew that the Lord was not coming today, for the hours of Christmas had all passed away. So he went to his room, and he knelt down to pray, and he said, Lord, why did you delay? What kept you from coming to call on me? I wanted so much your face to see. Then softly in the silence a voice he heard, Lift up your head, I kept my word. Three times my shadow crossed your floor. Three times I came to your lowly door. I was the beggar with bruised cold feet. I was the woman you gave something to eat. I was the child on the homeless street. Three times I knocked, three times I came in, and each time I found the warmth of a friend. Of all the gifts, love is the best. I was honored to be your Christmas guest. <laughs>